Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here, and I am here with my lovely friend, Daniel. And we had a few people ask on this YouTube channel to do a response video to this video that's called, Should You Use Intermittent Fasting Every Day to Burn More Body Fat? Because some people were concerned about fasting daily after watching this. And this is on sixpackabs.com YouTube channel. It's Thomas DeLauer that has created this. He makes a lot of YouTube videos. And yeah, I first wanted to say that I have over a year's worth of experience, around one year and three months, with daily intermittent fasting. It's one of the best things for my mental health, my physical health, optimizing my hormonal production, making me reduce my body fat percentage whilst increasing my muscle mass. I've also coached and helped so many people around the world and found that daily intermittent fasting is amazing. And then, yeah, Daniel also has a lot of experience with it. What And what is your experience? I've been eating one meal a day for like two years. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll yeah. get into it. Yeah, and would you say that it's been completely fine for you? Yeah, totally um, easily sustainable, and and um, I thrive on it. Yeah, so. yeah nice. Okay, so we're going to get on to this video. Going on sixpackapps.com, it's Thomas DeLauer, your fasting expert and creator of the science-based six-pack program. All right, so a lot of people have been asking if it's safe to fast every day. Well, so first off, he talked about all the amazing different benefits. So we're going to listen to these benefits because I think it's really good for, for you to become aware of them because they are so amazing. I want to talk about this because there are some reasons why you may not want to fast every single day. Let me first off start by saying I am 100% a proponent of fasting. So even though this video is going to talk about why you may not want to fast every single day, it still has the underlying premise of the fact that fasting is good. I just want you to get the most effect from it. So first off, let me give you a few benefits of fasting. The first one we want to talk about is the fact that it promotes what's called autophagy. Now, Autophagy Journal actually found that by fasting, you increase what is known as the autophagosome by 300%. See, what this autophagosome is, is a double membrane that works with a cell to trigger autophagy, which is the cell recycling. So basically, it's recycling the waste from the cell, from the cytoplasm, the fluid part of the cell, takes all the gunk, flushes it out. Without the autophagosome, that process doesn't happen. So fasting increases that by 300%. So that's freaking phenomenal to begin with. So right there we have that. Then we have the digestive benefits. It gives the digestive system a break. So it increases gut motility, allows the gut mucosal layer to actually heal. That's a huge, huge, huge benefit when it comes down to fasting. Then there was a study that Yale University did that found that when you expose human immune cells to beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is the main ketone body that is released when you are fasting, you have a massive reduction in inflammation. So we have inflammation reduction, we have digestive benefits, we have cell rejuvenation and recycling through autophagy, and we have what is called a decrease in synaptic activity in the brain, meaning it slows down your brain, which sounds bad, but it's actually good. It slows down all the extra electrical impulses that are going on in your brain that don't need to be going on. So your brain essentially becomes more focused and more effective. So now that we've got the benefits out of the way, let's talk about why you don't want to be fasting every single day, because it's going to blow your mind. Most people think you should be fasting every day. The first one is if you fast. Yeah, and if you're doing it correctly, you should be fasting every single day to get those amazing benefits every single day. Fast every single day, eventually you elevate your cortisol levels. See, the University of Virginia found that if you're fasting for multiple days in a row without a break, or you're doing intermittent fasting multiple days without a break, you can have up to a 50% increase in your cortisol levels. Now, don't get me wrong, we actually do want our cortisol levels to be a little bit elevated, but we don't want them to go through the roof, because if they go through the roof, then we start running into a big issue. The other thing you have to be... So yeah, it is very true, you don't want your cortisol levels to be too high for too long, because it will have a negative effect on your immune system, your mental health and physical health, hormone production, and many other things. So I'm going to let Daniel first talk a bit about what he thinks on, yeah, what he had to say about this. Well, I think it seems pretty obvious that if you take some people, you put them in some sort of scientific study and you tell them, okay, you're going to intermittent fast, you know, for so many days in a row, you can't eat um, during this window um, for all these days in a row, you know, possibly they get frustrated about it or, you know, they miss eating. It wasn't really, maybe it wasn't, they don't feel like it, it was their decision to intermittent fast and they're kind of being forced to do it. So, yeah, of course, maybe their cortisol levels will go up and they'll, they'll be stressed out about it. 
Yeah, and it's like, do they have any past experience with fasting as well? So if right. not, it can be more stressful for them at first while yeah. the body is adapting. So, yeah, there's many different variables with that study right. that could variate on how high the cortisol levels go or not. So, yeah, and, and you have to deal with certain emotions when you fast too. And so who knows, you know, what these people are going through. Then maybe they were just processing anger and, or whatever, sadness. And, yeah. I mean, that's just, it's kind of a part of the process. Yeah. And also, cortisol is an energizer. So when you go and then do some exercise, if it's not too long the exercise and too intense, it will actually bring your cortisol levels down. Right. So, yeah, if you're daily intermittent fasting, you'll find it quite high. Go and do some light cardio or some light calisthenics or some bodybuilding. And another factor is a lot of people have low levels of an androgen hormone known as DHEA. And when that's low, cortisol levels will go up massively and stay elevated for a long period of time. So by making sure you have adequate amount of DHEA production, it is an antagonist to cortisol, so it will bring the cortisol levels down. So yeah, this study did not take that into consideration and that is a huge, huge factor. So if you're someone that's daily intermittent fasting, you find your cortisol levels are too high, get your DHEA levels checked. If they're low, start supplementing with DHEA on a regular basis and also put some links down below for some suppliers that sell high quality DHEA supplements in case you're interested in them. So yeah, we're now gonna go on to the next thing. Is an excessive loss of minerals. See, when you're fasting, obviously you're not consuming food. So you're not consuming a lot of minerals. And then when you do eat, you're getting a small amount of minerals which is totally fine if you're fasting three, four, even five, honestly, even six days per week sometimes. You just don't want to be doing it continuously because eventually you will start having an imbalance of minerals. You won't get all the minerals that you need. Now, so yeah, I can understand his concern around this, but as long as you are making sure that you get the most nutrient-dense, and I mean micronutrient-dense foods, with all those vitamins and minerals and all these other phytonutrients and having the broadest spectrum of nutrients, you can make sure that your body is getting all of those essential nutrients that it needs. And there's some other things that people can do to resolve the issue as well, can't they? Yeah, I generally recommend taking a multivitamin, multimineral supplement if you're going to be eating one meal a day. Um, and yeah, it's like Danny said, it depends on the food. If you're eating like a lot of refined foods that are just kind of empty calories, then yeah, you're probably going to run into some deficiencies. But um, eat yeah. good food, maybe take a multivitamin, multimineral, and that's it literally won't be a problem. Yeah, so. and you're good to go. And yeah, I always take a high-quality multinutrient supplement by Form Research. It's one of the most best supplements on the market. Not the cheapest, but you get what you pay for. i put some links down below for that. And also... The majority of the time, we make our own elixir as well to break the fast, which has loads of different superfoods in it, such as wheatgrass green juice powder, gelatinized maca powder, Hawaiian spirulina. So yeah, by taking the multinutrient supplement and having this elixir and eating a lot of plant-based cooked foods after that, we are getting such an abundance of so many different micro and also macronutrients as well. So yeah, it's something that you really want to focus upon. And for all those superfoods, I'll put links down below for them in case you're interested in them. So yeah, this one can be easily resolved. Now, granted, you can add salt, you can add potassium when you're fasting to kind of keep those levels up, but you have an abundance of other minerals that are still potentially being a little bit weaned off of the body. So we want to make sure we get those in. The other thing is if you... Fa so yeah, as you said, you may not be getting enough of the nutrients that you need but by having a multivitamin then it's not going to be an issue with that whatsoever and you don't necessarily need to consume them while you're fasting you can just consume them when you have your meal that you're breaking your fast with or if you are someone that's eating two meals then you could take it twice in the day if you desire to with two different meals fast day in and day out you end up having a reduction in stomach acid which can make it a little bit harder to digest food when you do eat it so you want to be really careful there. Now the big one. So this one makes me laugh because, yes, it does that for a very good reason because it's not needing to produce loads of stomach acid to digest food. So that's a really, really good thing. If you look into the research online, when you eat food, more specifically proteins and other different foods, 
your stomach acid production starts to go up. And also, from the research I looked into, the more food that you consume in one sitting, the more stomach acid production goes up. So, yeah, that's not a concern whatsoever. So, yeah, is, do you have anything to add on to that? Yeah, it depends. You know, there's things you can do to increase stomach acid. Um, drink a lot of water. Hydrate when you're not eating. Apple cider vinegar helps a lot. Um, chew your food slower. Um, yeah, it's, it seems silly to make this point because, of course, your stomach acid is going to go down when you're not eating because you don't need to digest food. So, yeah. and when you, I mean, if you chew your food correctly, then it, it will send the signal to the stomach to raise the stomach acid, and there you go. So, yeah, it seemed like kind of a silly point to make to me. Yeah, and just make sure you don't eat the food really, really quickly as well. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, your stomach's not going to get to produce enough stomach acid and yeah as you mentioned with the apple cider vinegar if you're concerned about this issue get one tablespoon of raw organic unfiltered unpasteurized apple cider vinegar with the mother add that to eight ounces of water drink that about 15 minutes before your meal and that will resolve any stomach acid issues that you may have and a lot of people have issues with low stomach acid production no matter how many meals they eat in what diet they've got due to nutritional deficiencies so by taking the multi-nutrient supplement that will help as well and if you don't know where to get a type of apple cider vinegar i will put some links down below for a supplier that can sell and deliver the most highest quality apple cider vinegar that comes under the criteria that i've mentioned so again this one's really really easy to resolve talk about this is the one i want to spend a little time on is your basal metabolic rate okay so your basal metabolic rate is your body's baseline metabolism. How many calories your body burns at rest? The more active you are, sometimes the more you eat, the more that basal metabolic rate increases. So if you're fasting every day, eventually your calorie window is like this, and you're not eating a whole lot. So eventually your body's gonna set that as the new baseline. That's the new norm, which means when you do have a lot more food, it's gonna impact you in a negative way. So how do we get around this? So I'll hit Daniel speak about this one this one is quite laughable for me <laughs> yeah i'm i'm really kind of confused by what he's even getting at i i think what he's saying is that by fasting your basal metabolic rate is going down which then lessens the amount of calories um necessary to to um gain fat and by doing that when you hypothetically start eating more food when you break your fast or you stop fasting you're going to gain fat. I think that's what he's saying. But it's a hypothetical situation that he's proposing that you're doing this intermittent fasting and then you stop and you go back to eating, you know, stuff in your face whatever hour of the day you want to and that's going to cause you to gain fat. Well, of course it is. Um, I, I, I feel that he's not um, seeing the potential that you can just have a steady, consistent regimen of intermittent fasting or eating one meal a day, keeping your calories sufficient each time you eat and not having to worry about this basal metabolic rate going down and then eating more food and then you gaining fat. So, Yeah, um, and I don't see that the BMR going down while you're in a fasting state is a bad thing whatsoever. I don't see yeah. it's going to affect you in a negative way when you're going to eat. And he says that it affects you in a negative way, but he doesn't go into explaining what the negative effect is is exactly right. so this is why it's a little bit confusing and obviously yeah it's also theoretical fasting is designed to be a catalyst for all kinds of different diets it's designed to be done three to five days per week because what that's going to do is it's never going to change your basal metabolic rate i don't see why it's designed for three to five days a week that's what mm -hmm. his specific fasting yeah. protocol is for people that's so design. yeah i haven't <laughs> heard many people out there that promote daily intermittent fasting say to do it three to five times a week so that's just his personal opinion the intermittent fasting is always going to be the exception rather than the rule which means that it is going to instill a very positive effect every time you do it so if you're eating normally three thousand calories every day and then on a fasting day you consume a thousand well, that's a 2,000 calorie deficit from what your basal metabolic rate is or what your norm is. That's phenomenal, and that's exactly how you're going to have that decrease in body weight and that change in body composition. Maybe. Okay, well, I have to completely disagree with this. And first off, I need to mention that he is saying for people to eat, well, do intermittent fasting 
every three to five days, and I can see why. If someone is calorie restricting that much with eating a thousand calories, I would need days where I'm not intermittent fasting daily because it's just going to affect me in a negative way and not make me feel the best. And he also says that by doing the severe calorie restriction with intermittent fasting three to five times a week, it's going to massively reduce body fat. But I have found with eating one meal a day, for example, and even two meals a day, which you used to do in the past, that even with eating three to 4,000 calories, that I have a super, super low body fat percentage. It's not like an inch of fat on me. And I found that so many other people they embark on two meals a day or one meal a day, they can eat so many calories and still burn loads of body fat because when you're in that fasting state, insulin massively goes down, which is a fat storage hormone. It improves insulin sensitivity. Your body is burning the excess calories from food if you're having an excessive amounts of calories and all the stored up glucose known as glycogen and glucose and then it goes into fat burning mode where it's burning your body fat as fuel and it massively increases human growth hormone production and testosterone and a whole host of other amazing benefits to reduce body fat percentage whilst increasing muscle mass at the same time and is there anything else you would like to add on to that? I think you nailed it yeah yeah okay cool maybe one that is exactly why I recommend fasting less amounts, but doing it strategically. And again, I talk about that in my Science Based Six Pack program a lot, and you're strategically implementing fasting. But that's just the cool thing. Even if you're not following my programs, you can look at intermittent fasting and use it as an add on to whatever. Yeah, when he says strategically, I think that doing intermittent fasting like daily here and there and then switching on something else. I think that's just a bit more confusing to stick right. to. It's yeah, it's hard to find balance when you're changing it up that much. Yeah. Um, the swing may be really far one way and then swing really far the other way and be rocking back and forth, teeter-tottering, but you can just find your, you know, your little homeostasis. Yeah middle ground makes it a lot easier yeah exactly i agree with that that this would make it a lot more confusing for me like mentally like yeah. doing it daily and eating around the same time eating around the same amount of food it just makes it a lot easier especially for my busy lifestyle i don't want to be having to work out what days are going to be fasting on or right. not like it reminds me of like the guy the bodybuilders that do the bulking and cutting oh. all the time it's there's so much calculation and shit involved but really it's it's so simple to just gain to get lean and gain muscle if you know how to basically not eat when um, when your sugars or your glycogen stores are full, thus causing yeah. you to gain fat. You know, yeah, it's yeah. And I have found that so many people when doing intermittent fasting, doing severe calorie restriction for a lot of people, you then need days where you need to binge out and not just intermittent fasting, eat as much food as you can. And that was my number one mistake with intermittent fasting, was doing severe calorie restriction, so I felt that I had to eat multiple meals a day. Whatever diet you are already doing. If you're doing ketosis, great. If you're doing paleo, great. If you're doing high carb, low fat, great. You can still implement intermittent fasting a few days per week to really get the maximum effect from that diet. So I hope that this clears some he says doing it a few days a week to get the maximum effect from that diet. But actually doing it every single day is going to give you the maximum effect. So, yeah, I don't know where he's got that from. It doesn't make sense to me. Does it make sense to you? No, not really. I think we, yeah, I think we addressed everything pretty clearly. And, and um, yeah, the dude is just, I, he's making it more complex than it needs to be. Yeah. He does know, he, you know, he's got the benefits of fasting um, down pretty well. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it seems, yeah, it seems he just wants to say certain things to get you to go towards his program quite yeah. possibly. And I keep you from finding a good balance where you don't need to watch his YouTube videos or buy his programs to you know, figure out how much you need now and how much you need next week. Because if you can just figure out what works for you every single day and make consistent, steady growth using that, then you don't need to buy this dude's crap that he's selling, basically, <laughs> is, is, is what exactly. I think. Clear some things up. I hope that this makes a little bit of sense as to why intermittent fasting may not want to be done every single day. I know we say it's a lifestyle, but it's a lifestyle that you use as an add-on to whatever your other diets are, so that you don't end up having those calories go through the roof or go too low. As always, keep it locked in here with sixpackabs.com, and I will see you in the next video. And yeah, I agree, you can do intermittent fasting with any diet and it's going to give you the best weight loss results. And yeah, I'm not hating on him at all. I love his information. But there's certain things that I disagree with and certain people on my YouTube channel wanting to me to make this response video. I thought I'd do it with Daniel. 
because he had some additional things to share with you that I wouldn't have necessarily shared with you. So yeah, that is it for this video. If you have any questions or if you'd like us to make any other response videos, let us know down below and we get back to you as soon as possible and make those response videos as soon as possible. If you like the video, like it down below, give us a thumbs up and please share this video with anyone that you think would love to hear a response to this man's video on daily intermittent fasting and why he recommends not doing it every day. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button down below to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis talking about intermittent fasting one meal a day showing you what I eat with my one meal a day diet also vegan mukbang videos which do a lot of time with Daniel and many other types of videos help you gain and maintain the body desire the fitness levels and the energy levels as well and don't forget to check out Daniel's social media platforms there'll be links down below for his Facebook his Instagram and his YouTube I highly recommend you go there and check out his content and either subscribe or follow or yeah message him on facebook and add him as a friend and yeah thanks for watching as always so yeah stay fit stay energetic and go and get those games peace